All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and today we're going to do something kind of fun. I'm going to see if I can power up a power amp using a power amp and a frequency generator. So I've got a PowerSoft X4 with the first two channels, channels one and two, set into bridge mono mode. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. And out of that, and I'm running a tone generator into it with 60 cycles, but I can vary that. And out of that amp, I've made this handy dandy banana plug, NL, no, NL4 to uh, Edison adapter, actually banana plug to Edison adapter, that is going to drive the AC input of this Crest 4801. Um, and so we're going to turn up the juice and get that up to 120 and see what happens. Also, we'll take a look at what happens if you underpower the AC voltage to an amplifier. How important is it that we have a solid 120 volts go into the amp? How much power do we lose? And, um, you know, is it important when we see those power dips? Um, and what else will we do? Um, I'll be able to do a little bit with changing the frequency, like dropping it down from 60 hertz to 50 hertz. But the fan noise we're going to run into from the X4 driving that load of the other amp is going to kind of mess that up a little bit. Um, I'll do that in a future video. And in a future video, I will do, uh, let's power up another, like a class D amp using this class D amp um, and see how affected by power supply or AC voltage rail, AC voltage coming in, the amplifier is. Um, and really quick, I want to thank everybody who's joining, especially the people that have joined the membership um, and also the public. I appreciate the comments. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, though the membership doesn't generate much money, I mean, I make less in a month than I make in a day when I was touring, but it's inspiring. It's really, really cool. It really makes me happy to see that um, some of you out there are willing to just give back a little bit. It's a token. It's like a gesture to me saying you really appreciate it. And um, um, and for those of you that are on a budget or can't afford the $4.99 or whatever it is in your local country, that's cool too. I release stuff to the public um, after and um, most of what I do on the member side. All right, so let's go ahead and get this started. Now, it's a little nerve wracking to do this. Um, oh, let me move this camera here and I will show you. There's the Crest amp and um, there is the PowerSoft amp. And I've got this tone generator here, set at about 60 cycles and it's running into this Kluja wire. It's a, it's a, it's a, I hope I got it all right, but I'm pretty sure I do. So I'm going to bring up the voltage and, oh, we got a multimeter here. We'll, we'll be able to see the uh, output voltage of the PowerSoft amp and what's getting into the Crest. So here I'm bringing it up and the Crest amp is on. The volume's up all the way, but I'm not sending signal to it. 1822. This makes me nervous every time. 57, 59, 63. Okay, we're seeing red lights on the crest. <clears throat> I mean, green lights. The crest is turned on at 81 volts. Now let's go ahead and keep going up. Now, I don't want to go too high here. And I'll put it up about 120. There's 120.8 or 9. Cool. And we can hear that fired up. And let's go ahead and move the camera over and take a look at what's happening with the scope here and uh, we should be able to see as I add signal to it and I've got music going there so let's put a tone in so how will I do that I'm gonna have to pan the tone now I'm gonna pan that 60 cycle tone from the left out which is driving the input of the power soft and creating wall voltage to the center so that it hits both and I've dropped down to 81 volts. Um, this is the time where you really kind of want to know what you're doing because a little slip up could send a, a very high voltage to this other amp or... All right, 
120 volts. And let's go ahead and bring that up. And we can see it here on the scope. And there it is. And we can hear it here. And I've got that speaker turned padded way down. It's actually listening to the output and we can see those waveforms clipping. So I'm going to bring this right up to clip. And that's right where the red light is just barely coming on. And we're seeing the waveform just start to deform slightly. And we're seeing 120.6 volts. Now let's see what happens if I drop the input voltage down to 110. Oh, let's look at the voltage here. So we're, our voltage is, um, ooh, I don't know what our output voltage is. Our output voltage, let's go ahead and look at that. And here we can hear that um, um, Crest amp, I mean the PowerSoft amp winding up. So we're seeing about, ooh, listen to that amp sing. 51, 50, 60, 70, about 170 volts. And I'll calc that out later. Um, on the output, peak to peak on the 4801, one channel driven into eight ohms. Now I'm going to drop the input voltage down to 110. And as you can see on the um, waveform, we've started to distort there. So we got to remember we had 170 volts. Now we've got ooh, about 160. We lost about 10 volts. That's what a coincidence. And we're still clipping. So let's go ahead and bring this input down a little bit. And sure enough, we've got 160 volts. So this is almost a direct transfer of the input voltage to the out. I dropped 10 volts on the input. I got 10 volts down on the out. So we'll have to do a calc on 170 and a calc on 160 peak to peak. What happens if we get down to, what if we go to Japan and use those same amps, we got 100 volts. What are we going to get out of that? And then we'll drop it down to 100 volts. And sure enough, we drop down there. And we're seeing clipping happening right around. Uh, 150, 142, 144, 144 volts. Yeah, about 144. Um, all right, I wish I had a pen, but I'll remember this. You can help me remember, right? 144, 160, 170. Um, and let's say we got really crappy power. We go down to 80 volts. Oh, brought the wrong one down. Oops, we lost one channel there. And it came back. I heard the relays kick in. And we'll get this down around 80 volts. And 80 volts, we've got... Um, ooh, I can smell my loads burning. Uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, 120, about 120. Okay, 120, 144, 160, and 170. Um, I'm going to go get a pen. Okay, so... With 170 volts on the output, when we had 120, we were getting 451 watts into 8 ohms out of this amp, approximately. I'm not being super accurate, but um, that's about where it clipped. When we dropped it down to 110 volts, that was at 120. At 110 volts input, we got 160 volts. We lost 52 watts. We went down to 399 watts. And at 100 volts, we went to 144 
on the output peak, which gave us 323 watts. We were down almost, we were down over 125 watts. And at 80 volts, we were all the way down to 120 peak to peak, which gave us 224 watts, which is about one half the power. We lost half the power at 80 volts. Now half the power is only 3 dB, not that much, but it is 3 dB and 3 dB if you can get 3 dB more out of a rig, that's the difference between kind of soft and punchy, especially if you're right on the edge. So 80 volts is definitely an issue. Um, 110, there is some more juice to be had. Let's do another test really quick and uh, take a look at what happens if I over voltage it and we'll wrap this up. So first of all, let's bring this up to 120. Ooh, wow, I'm up at 130. Um, let's bring it up to about 120. And I'm going to bring up the waveform there. Let's go to 130 and let's overdrive this amp on the input. We'll go to 135. We'll run this baby hot. There we go. Now let's see how much juice we get out of here. And we've got about... 150. Hmm. We are not seeing much more. We've got 51. Oh, almost 200 volts. Just shy of two. No, about 200 volts. We're seeing 200 volts on the output. Holy shoot. Holy shit. Let's see what happens if I go back down and make sure this is real. I'm going to go down to 120. And yeah, sure enough, I am clipping here. And when I raise that input voltage, it cleans right up. 200 volts. Let's check it out. Um, so we'll calc that out. Clear and 200 times 0.3535 equals 70.7. .7, and we're going to times 70.7. .7 equals divided by eight equals 624 watts 0.8 well hell yes we got 625 watts out of this thing at 135 volts we only got 450 at 120 um and at 110 we're at 400 so this is actually, now that's 624, that's almost three times the amount of um, watts. It's, um, what, four plus, D, that's over four dB. So, running those hot voltages. Now, these amps are not unlike guitar amps and tube amps. And uh, this is why when uh, the voltage is low, the guitar players are all upset on stage their amps don't sound right the guitar rigs don't sound right because they're relying on those voltage rails created right off the mains and when the mains are low they can't the uh, guitar rigs won't feed back they won't distort at the same point they'll distort too early uh you won't have as much punch or much output as much output as you would if you have hotter ac voltage rails uh, and i like myth busting and yes this ac voltage rails will make a difference um i'll do another vid maybe we'll take a look at um frequency do amps really sound different in europe at 50 hertz than they do here in the u.s at 60. cool cool um thank you for joining